Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I mixed a song start to finish, every track, every plugin, every piece of automation, every decision, everything. And I'm super grateful for Brian Fisher, uh, who has supplied the tracks. Um, his band is Eastern Souvenirs, and he's a great guy and just uh, awesome all around, very talented person. So the song we're going to be mixing is called Worth. And let's just jump into it. Okay, so now we are in the session. I am in Pro Tools. I'm going to first start um, by just playing the whole song back so you can hear it. And then once I discuss all the other stuff, maybe there's going to be a moment in the mix that you heard that you can't wait to get to. And this way you can just hear the song up front. Now I should say that I did not, um, the, the song that appears on the streaming services is not going to be this one. I am just mixing this for fun because I really wanted to because I really like Brian Fisher. I, I like his music. I think he's crazy talented. And I was like, can I just use this on the channel and mix it? And he was, you know, totally cool with that. So um, I listened to what was on the streaming services and I heard the mix that was done. And um, obviously it's, it's how I fell in love with the song, but I just found that it had a tone that was um, very kind of like effect heavy and and it was uh, it, it just had like a, a, a kind of just a, a vibe that was very kind of like rough and and distorted and once I got all the tracks I couldn't believe just how much was there and I wanted to go in a different direction and create something that was very open that highlighted all of the instruments Brian is crazy talented I know he played a lot of these himself and so when I got the the tracks I thought oh this is really cool we can um, we can kind of mellow out a little bit and and just play everything and really unearth what's there and highlight it so um, so that's 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 why you'll hear a disparity between the stuff that's kind of online and what you're going to hear now this is very much like my subjective <laughs> mix that's just for fun so um, let's start from the very beginning this track is called Worth and it's by Eastern Souvenirs aka Brian Fisher check it out. See that you don't have 
so weird, isn't it? Listening to like this uh, big, beautiful song and staring at all this like cold digital one, ones and zeros. Um, anyway, that's the track. And uh, now that we're all zoomed out here, I might as well explain uh, what's going on. So all of my guitars are this color, this kind of greenish color, and they're all going out a bus that's feeding into my master bus right there, okay, master track. And then we have vocals that are in this kind of like light blue, and they've got a vocal bus too, and they've got a bunch of effects down here that go into, you know, that master track. And then we have percussion here, which is in red. It's got a percussion bus and it's feeding into the master as well. The drums are purple. Um, these colors are totally arbitrary. It's not like, oh yeah, all drums have to be purple. It's just what I've decided here. Uh, and then we have keys, which are in orange and they've got a key bus that goes into the master as well. It's, you know, as far as like mixes go, this is a very vanilla style uh, of routing here. There's a shimmer verb. I have no idea why that's down there, but I'm not going to move it, you know, lest it curse the entire mix. But that is that is the session. And I think it's it's maybe valuable for us to um, to go through and discuss what we're, you know, like what we're seeing here, what we're hearing and just talk about it. Maybe let's start with what we first see here, which is the guitars. So you'll notice that we have an acoustic track that opens things. And on that, we've got a Sculptor, which is a spectral shaper. It's just a very easy way for me to get a very quick sound without using compression and EQ. Um, set to 70% here, tone is up to bright, speed's low, so we don't get too much of the sound of this thing trying to meet this target, this acoustic guitar target. And for those who don't know, Sculptor was designed to basically analyze your track and help it fit into the ideal version of what, you know, an acoustic guitar or whatever other target that you have here, what it should sound like in a very well mixed and balanced song. So that's what it's designed to do. Um, and that's kind of how I've used it. I just wanted to get a quick sound right away. So let's go before and after on, on this first guitar track. So it's getting rid of some stuff from like two to 600, just dipping it down and really accenting and, and, and bringing up the brightness of everything in the upper kind of register, which I really like the sound of. Um, I've got a pro Q over here, which is just dipping information at 2100 Hertz. And this is a trick that I uh, do now that I consulted with, consulted, learned from Dom Morley, who runs the Mix Consultancy. And you can watch those videos on my channel. It's just to kind of get out of the way of where the wow factor of the vocal is, which we'll get to a little bit later. So I, I tend to duck, you know, 2K everywhere just to kind of dip and, and get things out of the way of that kind of impact part of, of the vocal frequency wise. Um, and then we have trim plugins here. I use trim plugins now instead of going to the, uh, you know, the main fader. So if I switch over here to the other view, what do you notice? They're all at, you know, unity at zero here. And this is just how I've, I've, <clears throat> I've taken to working. I, I just really like to have a trim plug in here. And, you know, this way, you know, the loudness is at the very end of all the tools. And I'm not kind of going back here like, what did I do? Is it is it up T? Is it down 2 dB? What's going on? I can just kind of have the last the last part of the chain here and just bring it down. Um, and uh, and also I can I can, you know, turn phase on and off here for 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 stuff uh, for drums and that. Uh, flip the polarity. So I'm not spending time in this window. It allows me to focus and just and just hang out here in, in, in this one kind of view in this one window. So that's just how I how I've worked. So you'll see trim plugins all over my session. Um, at the very last thing at the insert level. So uh, let's talk about the uh, the other guitar, which is all the way left. This is an LCR mix. So center is C left is L and right is R. Everything is either up the middle uh, some stuff is spread out evenly, but everything else is like either, whoa, way to the left or way to the right. You do tend to pay for it a little bit if someone was to uh, play your track on a mono device. But the way I see it, most people are all listening in headphones or stereo you know, playback devices. For the most part, this is not going to the club. I don't have to worry about that. And this way I can really take advantage of the kind of panoramic canvas that the two channels provide. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's so much great stuff in here, so many great instruments that... 
Um, I really wanted to highlight them and, and just throw them everywhere and really open the mix up. So that's why I did what I did. So for this other acoustic guitar, same thing, Sculptor. Let's bypass this here. So here we're actually getting a little bit of this like from 60 to 120, a little bit of that kind of warmth back, but we're still accentuating the high end. Um, and let's just kind of add these two guitars together here. The, the, the one on the right is a little louder and I think I accounted for that. This is going down minus 3.5, down minus four. Um, so they're, they're a little quieter off to the side to give this guy a little bit more, more space here. Actually, they don't really play together until the end. So that was more about the ending than, than the beginning. So it's much louder in the right, but that's okay because when I unmute everything, we can still hear everything really nice. Anyway, we have the Pro-Q bringing stuff down at 2100 again. Um, and if I keep going to the electric guitars here, uh, I have an 1176 on both. And if I go here, the blue one, um, these are just, you know, uh, reducing gain, controlling things. These sound awesome. So, I mean, I've got another Pro-Q doing the same dip. You're going to see this all over the place. But these guitars sound really good. And, you know, the idea that we're going to go and add a bunch of plugins and, and reverbs and all that stuff. Look at my sense. I don't have anything here because these, these instruments, in my view, just didn't need it. They sound great. Let's bring this other other one in. So if I take these 1176s out, they just get a little plucky. And also in this section here, that you know, it's a little quieter. You can just even see it on the waveform here. If I hit E, you know, we're a little quieter as opposed to going into this section here. So it's important to have the compressor there just to smooth everything out and keep it nice and, and even as even as possible. And what do you notice? Well, we have one all the way left and one all the way right, which, uh, which I don't know, sounds good to me. If I just go to just the guitars here, solo these guys. So even as I mentioned, we have, uh, it's less loud here, but that compressor just even things out such that once we get to this moment, it's not like down, down, it's, you know, way louder and kind of like turn the mix down. You want people to crank the mix up. So um, that's what's going on here. Let's check out the bus, API 2500. I mean, just light gain reduction, not much. And you'll notice a lot of like buzzing and just stuff. I like all that stuff. That stuff's fine to me. And it's going to get buried a little bit in the mix. So unless we have a real big strident squeak or something like that on the fretboard, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to let it let it be. So let's turn off this uh, this API. It's just a great bus. I mean, it's a but look. It's a bus compressor. It just sounds really good. <laughs> Guitars can be unruly, and I found that once I once I put the API back, it just kind of it brought back some of the bite that I was con trying to control with the Sculptor and with the 1176s. And then we have Soothe again, just because you know 
there can still be a little bit of bite and i i don't like my guitarist to be too attack heavy and i i, I tend to put soothe at you know at the end of all my buses just to very carefully you know just smooth everything out i'm not sure we're going to get a huge before and after on this guy but let's give it a shot here So soothe is just it's just doing just that it's just soothing and of course I got a trim on the bus itself which might be overkill but you know that's the guitars that's it here's how they kind of start the track in case you don't remember So that's it. I mean, if this was a ballad or something, I might add maybe a tremolator or some kind of, you know, crystallizer to the guitar in certain moments to really bring out the emotionality. But because these guys are all so well recorded um, and, you know, well played and all the rest of it, the idea that we're going to add all this stuff on top of the guitars when I don't think they need it just seems like a really like a big waste of time and a disservice to the song. So let's move on to the kind of main event here, which is the vocals. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. This is the, the busiest I think you'll see my, my, uh, my insert level, you know, the sends and the inserts. This is the busiest it gets for me. Uh, that's just because the vocals are the, it's the star of the show, right? So um, uh, let me solo this and see if, if all my solos and solo safes are good. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see that you don't have to prove your worth to me? Super talented, amazing voice. In fact, he actually sent me a, uh, I asked for all the vocals to have like all the tuning off. And the one without the tuning is the one that you're listening to. It just sounds better um, to me. So anyway, um, let's start with um, all the effects here. So starting off, uh, you know, I, I don't use this because it sounds the best, this Pro Tools EQ. It's just it's the easiest thing for me to go. I just type in EQ and it's the first thing that comes up. And all I'm looking to do is just a, a bit of a high pass to get rid of some rumble. Now, the next thing is um, I did use Soothe pretty aggressively here. Uh, let me just turn all these guys off. I'll keep trim on. Um, and I'll keep the sense going. It's fine. And, uh, you can hear with and without soothe. So this is without soothe. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. Let's put soothe back in. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. Pretty subtle. If I hit the delta, you can hear what's being soothed or what's been kind of taken away as a result of the processing. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. Pretty light. I'm not going too hard. Um, I just thought that it needed a little bit of a little bit of soothing. And then we have an 1176, which is taking off, um, here's the blue face again, taking off maybe more gain than it should have, but we'll make up for it on the other end. Four to one ratio, um, really fast attack, slow release. Uh, this is a fast compressor, so um, not that Brian needed it, but anyway, I probably went too hard with this, but have a listen. Here's uh, with it on and then off. When will it be enough? It's always what you Here's off. 
When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. What? So I probably went a little hard on this, but you know, we we get more gain back um, in other ways. But I just I love the eleven seventy six the the blue face or whatever it's called or I mean this is the the black face I don't know if I can say that on YouTube but um, anyway I, I don't know it's one of the one of the faces the blue stripe I don't know um, turn this back on right afterward I really love this plugin it's Gem Dopamine it, it's adding back level and it's adding back uh, or it's adding in some of that high frequency stuff which we soothed and took care of with this instance of soothe that just kind of brings it in so have a listen. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. Here it's in. What will it take to see that you don't have to prove your worth to me? So we got back our loudness that we got rid of with the 1176 with the gem plugin. And then we have a little bit of trim going in here. Um, and then we actually have Spectre, which I did a, a feature of on the channel. And I'm just boosting with this solid algorithm, everything at, at 2000 cycles. So let's listen to that before and after. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. Here it is in. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. Here it is out. What will it take to see In. that you don't have to prove your worth to me? So listen to it in the mix because what I find it does a really great job of is, and this is what Dom talked about, it is helping the the singer kind of step forward a little bit, but not in a in a overtly gain loudness kind of way. I'll put it in and out um, in the actual mix here. Uh, let's see if I can do it during a, a section where we have a lot more instrumentation in the arrangement. Here it comes once again The feeling that you're falling behind And it takes all your time Looking for a mountain to climb So hopefully on headphones or whatever you're listening to, you're noticing a bit of a a bit of an adjustment in presence, and it just it just steps forward. I really believe that that you know this is one of those things that's going to follow me into the rest of my my mixes. I think now there's a lot of um, there's a lot of effects which I think we should take a look at uh, maybe once we go over to their dedicated sends over here um, or oxes that is. But if I were to take them all off. You'd see just, I mean, this is all time-based stuff. It's reverbs, delays, and things like that. Some of this is automated, but listen to how much of a difference it makes on Brian's voice. When will it be enough? So here's the main verb. When will it be enough? Add some delay. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. Now these are bridge effects, so we're not going to hear them yet, but let's see if the, I think the weird effects comes in here. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see? If I mute these other guys here, listen. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see? I think this is just uh, an effects rack from Sound Toys. Just, just crushing it and doing something weird and I can send as much out and back to it as I, as I want. And this kind of floating, yeah, this doesn't come in until we hit the, um, that kind of the big breakdown. But I also want to 
pop over on the main vocal to the, the volume trim. And this is where I've done a little bit of work here to make sure that some, some words stick out because they wouldn't otherwise, um, I think. So you'll see it's, it's mostly at the end of a certain phrase where I just have to bring them up a little bit so that we get um, an understanding of what he's singing about. So So right, right on C, he says it, and and um, to me at the end here. Have a listen. It's more the your, the your worth part, but here's another example. That you can't shake. So just on shake, he just kind of goes down. Yeah, I could I could twiddle with the compressor again and try to figure that out, or I could just with the pencil tool just draw in a little bit of automation to get them up there, and now I can hear that word. Um, and we really go go hard for it here at the end. Um, even though by now you probably know what he's singing, I still want to make sure that the last thing we hear is something intelligible and, and kind of clear. So that's the main vocal. Um, and I'll just flip back to the waveform for everybody. Now, the next thing we have is a whisper track. And what you'll notice is that I did a lot of muting on the whisper track. Um, you know, normally it, it, it sounds, whoops, it sounds like, I thought this would, there we go. It sounds like this. It's always what you're of. of course, it's pan super right. We have another one pan super left. The whisper, I'm so happy it's here, by the way, but like you don't need to use, I'll put it this way. Just because it was recorded doesn't mean it belongs in the mix. People tend to, you know, they get these sessions and there's 8,000 tracks and it's like, I have to use, well, you don't. You just have to use the ones that you think you need when you need them. Um, and in my view, it's more important to have impact and have these whispers come in at the very end here when things get really quiet and we're just kind of hanging out with Brian and, and he's doing his kind of goodbye here. When I just didn't think we needed it at the beginning, you know, nor did I think we needed it uh, during the verses. I just, I, I wanted to keep things nice and sparse because once we get to this big chorus, that's when I want, and you'll see other kind of muting and stuff. That's when I want everything else to come in. Brian is an awesome singer, so he can go ahead and record a bunch of like whisper tracks and there's at low doubles. We got... Uh, double vocals, we got harm and everything, you know, but what have I done here? I've gotten rid of the whisper tracks at the beginning, right at this section here. I do want the double vocal to get through. But once we get to this first verse here, I don't think, you know, I don't think we need the double vocals. I don't think we need the whisper tracks. Um, I did I did let some of these harmonies through a little bit. We'll, we'll talk more about them once we get there. But just to to make sure that the 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 chorus really just punches you in the face, we can't have these. In my view, we can't have these harmonies and stuff. And Brian's, you know, he's a great singer in, on his own. We don't need ten of him. You know, he's going to sound great just with one. Sometimes you have a couple people who you have some people who will kind of like have that main vocal get all vocal lined with like 10 other vocals to just really add a lot of impact in the verses. Um, I just don't think we need to do it here. All your time so we're going to go into the chorus. For a mountain to climb. When will it be so if I had all these vocals on all at once, um, the chorus just wouldn't hit. It just wouldn't, you know, with the vocals and everything. So let's save them. Let's, let's surprise people. So as far as processing goes, I mean, it's an EQ, super high passed, right? Allowing the, uh, the highs to pass, keeping the lows out. And we have this going to the main, the main vocal verb, which I think is neo verb. And that's true for both. Um, and as you saw, we have uh, panned all the way right, panned all the way left, okay? We have this low double, which is getting nothing for me as far as plugins. Next. When will it be enough? So I, I, did, I mean, they're not even tuned. They just sound awesome. They're just supporting everything down there. Um, I have a trim plugin just to control volume. They're super low um, and that's it. Another low. 
When will and I don't have I don't, there's no I'm not gonna pan a low vocal all the way to the left and the right that doesn't make any sense it's gonna kind of reinforce Brian at that chorus and stay in the center um, and then we have another low octave down here when will it be enough I think these are tuned actually thinking of so you know obviously on its own it, it sticks out a little bit but once it's in the mix So that is that. Um, let's go to these double vocals here. Uh, I've got them panned all the way left and panned all the way right. It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see that you don't have to prove your worth to me? Identical processing, I have an EQ band that high passes. I have Soothe that soothes. The Gem Dopamine plugin just brings the level up, adds that, you know, adds that, um, that lovely high end without sourness, and then a trim plugin just to control the level. And look at how far down that is, you know? It's not 8.2 decibels all the way down. So, um, and thing with the main vox, this is also going to uh, the neoverb, and I think we have some bridge effects because they do show up at the bridge, so we gotta make everything kind of, sound kind of swirly and crazy at that moment. But I guess what I'm getting at here is like, you, I'm not doing a whole bunch of surgical stuff and everything's, you know, EQ'd and notched to within an inch of its life. It's just, okay, I'm in a high pass because I don't want the lows to get in the way of, you know, my bass and everything else. I'm gonna add a little bit of suit just to control stuff bring stuff up with gem and then trim plug in and we're done. Um, and that's, that goes for both of them. There's some more, um, things over here. Harmony. Takes all your time looking for a mountain to climb. Just sounds, you know, great. Once it's blended in with everything, trim plug in and it's all the way to the left. Uh, we have another harmony here. And will it be enough? And that's got a trim plug in there. Uh, I do have an auto tune, and this is from yeah, this is from UA, just to, to to help sharpen things. I could have used his tuned, but I just decided I'm already going with some of these uh, untuned um, tracks. I'll just bring in auto tune, which I rarely ever use. So I was kind of like, how do I do this? But um, anyway, there it is. I'll usually go into Melodyne and kind of do it myself. Uh, but in this case, I'm like, yeah, take a shot, roll the dice on auto tune, and a trim plug in. It's going all the way to the right. It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see that you don't have to prove your word to me? It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see? And we have a, the final harmony down here. Enough. It's always what you're thinking of. And this is kind of hanging out on, on, on the left. And there, look at this. There's nothing. There's just trim. That's it. So um, when you get harmonies like this that are really well recorded and performed, you know, I think you should just kind of respect them and, and not do too much to them and just kind of leave them alone and, and let, them, let them support what's going on here with the vibe and everything. Um, and that brings us to some effects that we have here. Uh, I believe, eh, I believe we have, uh, this is muted. I think it's on some mute automation. Yeah. So right over here, uh, is where I have the effects rack and this is this bridge Vox effect. Um, I think I'm using, uh, yeah, so I'm using, this is sound toys. So when we get to the bridge, you know, we have to create some suspense. I've got two echo boys and a micro shift large lush reverb is is what i you know used here it'll just stick a bunch of a bunch of the plugins in and and then you can kind of do it do what you want to them um but in this case i don't think i'd have much and so when it comes on here when it unmutes let's 
let's see if you can hear what's going on. Actually, what I'm going to do is just solo all of all of my vocals. And let's see if, um, well, actually, wait a moment. I think I've got the bridge box on a couple different vocals. I'm just going to, there we go. This one, this one, and this one here. And I didn't do the right way. There we go. Is it still, yeah. Quit the bitter self-talk, won't you listen to yourself? We take this effects rack off, have a listen. Quit the bitter self-talk, won't you listen to yourself? You're gonna go insane if you keep trying to measure up. But with it on... Quit the bitter self-talk, won't you listen to yourself? You're gonna go insane if you keep trying to measure up. I just wanted that swirl, I wanted that chaos. That's it. It's just a little bit of mute automation. Um, and that's that's it for, for that. Can I just call out like how cool these guitars sound? These these guitars sound so much like um sorry. Um they sound so much like Interpol to me. Um turn on the bright lights. They have just the, the right amount. I don't know what pedals are. I'm not a guitar person, but they just sound they just sound really great. And that's why we didn't do much to them. Um, we have this uh, another Echo Boy here, which I did a video on. If you guys want to check that out, like a you know why is everyone obsessed with? And it really got me back into the 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 spirit of of Echo Boy. So we have uh, Echo Boy here, and this is just giving a bit of a lift off to Brian's vocal before we we go into uh, kind of float around before the big. The big, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, the big kind of impact moment here. So. You don't have to prove your to me. so if I just solo this, and I'm gonna solo my lead. That you don't have to prove your worth to me. Right? This just kind of sends us, you know, into orbit here um, before we get to this lovely little whatever this part is here. We needed something to kind of say goodbye to him. Um, and then we have some weird effects here. I'm curious what this is. I thought this was the effects rack, but the weird effects is Echo Boy and it's on a high and bitey. What's going on there? So it looks like it was also here just to support the the lift off here. Let me just go back to my main vocal. Prove your worth to me. If I mute this. Prove your worth to me. Prove your worth to me. Bring it back. Prove your worth to yeah. me. Yeah, it just sounds really weird and fun. And again, you know, controlled, because it kind of comes up in, in full force here, uh, but uh, it's hanging out in the background. Um, our delay is an Echo Boy. Uh, that's the, this is the main delay on, on the vocal, uh, but it's really enhanced here. I don't know why I have two of them, to be quite honest. I'm not sure. Okay, one other oh, different. It's a different. Uh, so this is a ping pong. 
and this other one is just a, a single echo. So that's kind of the difference between them. And then the main uh, verb is neoverb, which is a, a, a combination of, of hall and plate, not much, you know, kind of early reflections in here. And I'm doing a lot of EQing um, on the reverb, no EQing on the pre reverb, but um, on the actual reverb itself, we're, we're kind of taming things and stuff. So that's, that's neoverb, 100% wet. Um, if I go to some other part of the song here, let's see if I can get his vocal. When will it be enough? It's always what's When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. It sounds, it sounds pretty good with all the time-based effects. Sorry, it sounds pretty good without the time with with the time-based effects, but the reverb just adds a bit of a halo to everything. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see that you don't have to prove your worth to me? Of course, being able to blend between all these guys is is, is really nice, uh, these different algorithms. So that makes up, you know, the vocals. That's what's going on there. Let's move on to the uh, percussion bus. bus. Um, actually, let's, before we do that, I want to go back up here because I did do a little bit of um, automation on the main volume over here uh, on some of these uh, auxes just to kind of increase their 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 power in certain moments and to accent certain parts of the arrangement whether it's the chorus or the verse so over here I turn the guitar bus up oh I've got something soloed here I think that's pretty much it yeah So this is a little trick you can do to really make certain moments pop out more than others. It's just to lift them a little bit with some kind of, whether it's the uh, you know trim automation or volume or whatever. Um, and you'll see something I do on my master bus to this effect. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'm doing it to the vocals at all. I think, yeah, I'm leaving the vocal bus alone. Um, but over here, you'll notice once we get the percussion, um, I'm doing some stuff. I'm doing volume trim stuff over here where it comes up or it goes down or it comes back up and goes down because the, the percussion is pretty, it's pretty heavy in this song. There's a lot of a lot of shakers and weird little things that sound awesome, but they can kind of overtake a mix. So why don't we actually start with the individual stuff and then work our way back up to the buses. So the first thing we have is this analog drum machine, which starts the track and provides a bit of tonal contrast. Like one of the really nice things about this mix is that there's so much that's like, you know, we've got all these weird instruments and, and we have old stuff and new stuff and retro stuff. And so we have this retro analog drum machine, which uh, opens the track like this. And I really fiddled with this. This took a very long time. You can see it's up, <laughs> even though I've got trim, it's up, it's clip gained up, and then it's it's brought back down a little bit. Um, the EQing on this was insane. So I, this is, you know, just on its own. I mean, this is a very loud little drum machine. So I had to find a way to deal with this guy. So Pro-Q is coming in and just doing a high pass, but also getting rid of a lot of this kind of thump here. But we bring back some of the magic with this uh, little, I don't know, crayon box, RC20 retro color. That sounds like this. Really changes the sound. I mean, even if I took my EQ off and, and brought this in and out, just listen to like what retro does. This is before. Here it is, in. So I just needed a way to tame it. So we have the, the EQ at the, at the top coming in. And then I still found like there was some residual harshness. So I added Soothe. 
So before. Better. It was just kind of knocking in my brain. Um, but that's how we opened the track. And I believe there's some volume, yeah, trim automation. Because even after all this stuff, like it, it's loud. And then I had to find a way to bring it down just a little bit. So it kind of, it's on the descent, right? When will it and now it's kind of out of the way until it comes back over here. Without anything. <laughs> I just had to get it under control. So um, next up we have some finger symbols, which, hey, no plugins at all. They sound like this. Really clever, just little things to accent, you know, here it is in the mix. Here it comes once again. Just if you can do something to, you know, hey, look over here, why not? And I think this is going to bus five and six, which I think is my little shimmer verb. Yeah, bus five and six, I got neo verb down here. I don't know why it's hanging out all the way down here. I have certain things going to this little shimmer verb, uh, but you know, this the finger symbols and stuff, they can be very transient and attack heavy. And I, I think that a verb can just help to, um, or something time-based can help just defang a little bit the the sound so here's before Here it comes. and after I don't know um, maybe it doesn't make a difference with it on or off but I anyway. so this is a uh, you know all the way left and right here and then we have a shaker one of many shakers and this is all the way to the right People always tell me my shakers are too loud and I hate turning them down because I like the sound of them so much. Now we have goat hooves. Thanks, Brian. Also going to that shimmer verb. So this is what I mean more by the, de we want to defang stuff that's kind of percussive and like attack heavy. Adding some verb just kind of softens it and makes it a little easier for everyone to hang out with. And we have a transient shaper here. Yeah, this was just again in an effort to defang it a little bit because it's so bright. Here's with the here's with both of them off. It's just like burrowing into your brain. And also the the shimmer and the transient just adds a bit of movement to it, which is a happy accident. And then we have goat hooves on the right, and I don't think we need to spend too much time talking about this, but there they are. Um, tambourine, all the way on the left. Again, just trim, a little bit of loudest management. Uh, we have claps, which I think I had to turn down quite a bit um, from where they were. They're all the way to the right. Here they are on the mix. Here it comes. And then we have the next bit, which is, what is this hand? Havana Maracas. And this is like a logic thing or something. It sounds great though. All the way to the left. Taken down quite a bit. They're taken down because, like, look at how many things are going on here in this section. You know, it's a lot. And you, if that stuff isn't panned, if its levels aren't kind of managed, you can get into trouble. So that's why. That's why everything's going on. So 
claps. I, I want I want it all. I love percussion, um, especially in a song like this, which is like you know Eastern souvenir. We're on like a cruise to like some new island. I don't know. I just. To prove your worth to me. Some more maracas and they're panned all the way to the right and all that stuff just gives us that really nice like you know when you get off the plane and you look around it's just like the world opens up so um and at the very top here yeah we just have some percussion bus stuff because it got a little loud right so we had to turn it down or it got a little quiet i want to turn it up over here what do we got here So this is the verse and it goes into the chorus and we go up, um, let's see how much here, if I can get away with this, up 0.8 decibels, okay. To climb, and when will it be enough? It's always... And then we get to this new section of the arrangement and we go down just because it's too loud. We go down by, wow, almost 8 dB. Just want to highlight the guitars and some of the keys here. But they come back up soon. Because we want that impact. That's the percussion, and that's what's going on there. Um, so now let's move on to the drums, which sound wonderful. Um, I think you had a buddy help him with the drums. Um, and uh, we're doing some stuff here. I had a thought about adding a gate to all the toms, um, and then I just I get so stressed out when I'm using gates because you never really get what you want with a gate. You never just get like, I just want the tom. You, it's always a trade-off. And so I'm like, maybe I'm okay with bleed. Maybe I'm okay with spill. And then I just became okay with bleed and okay with spill. <laughs> but it's, you know, there's a lot of drums here and a lot of percussion. You got to be careful because if, if everyone can come in, you know, and all the oxygen just, you know, lets out of the room and it's, it's stuffy and it's, you know, smelly. So you have to be careful. Um, but with this track, I took a chance and, and, and I did not employ gates on, on, the, on the toms. So, I mean, these are kind of overheady, right? And there's also no, there's no compression because that, you know, all that other spill and stuff can come up when really all I want is this guy. That boom. Anyway, so it's there. Um, I added little labs VOG just to give some low end to the toms. This isn't going to be a huge difference, but like, to me, it's worth it. And after, there's just just extra body, just extra thump, and a trim plug-in, and it's all the way over to the right because I'm doing kind of like a drummer's perspective a little bit where we have the floor toms on the right, right? The tom rack toms are here, snare is here, hi hats here, cymbals. So it's it's on the left or the right, sorry, on the floor. And then we have a rack tom. This is what they sound like. So we get a nice, I mean, pretty even levels. She has a little louder. Cool. We get the rack toms. What do we have? We have the transient shaper. Over here. Barely doing anything. And we have a trim. Cool. Overheads. Uh, actually, before we go over to um, the overheads, on the floor, Tom, always check your phase. Always check. Just hit this. If it sounds better and you get more, even if it's like an inch more level or impact, leave it flipped. In this case, didn't have to. For the rack, Tom, didn't have to. 
Uh, for the overheads, did I have to? Yes, for the overheads, I did flip the face because I found that I got a bit more impact once I flipped it. So it's worth it. This little trim plugin, it's worth it. You're probably not going to hear a huge difference, but we'll do before and after we flip the polarity here. To me, the snare just comes out. Flip the phase. What do you have to lose? Um, so we have the rack tom all the way to the left, the floor tom all the way to the right. I do pan. I cover panning because I, I watch tutorials. No one ever talks about panning or level. So that's why I'm, you know, just for the me out there that wants the panning stuff. That's what's going on. Mono overhead. Sounds like that. And now we get into our, and by the way, level, this, you know, unity. I didn't do anything. Cool. Snare sample. Uh, we have Sculptor on, on snare duty, okay? Sounds like this. That sounds like a snare sample. Bypassed. That's the nice thing about these, uh, these handles is that if I don't want this stuff to be processed, I can just bring this up and be like, yeah, I don't want any shaping happening over here. And as it was, I think this was just adding some thumpiness or something. Yeah, I don't like that. So I'm gonna omit that from processing. Snare in the center, snare top. Uh, it's got a sculptor on it too. This one was the one that was recorded in the room, I believe. Now that's a very dramatic difference. So listen to how much the tone changes. So there is a ton of spill on that snare top, but that's okay because it just works. The snare sample has come down quite a bit, but it's just adding a bit of a oomph to the overall snare. This is my combined sound. If I turn off Sculptor on the snare top, it kinda sucks. But turning it on, now if I, if I mute the snare sample altogether, we don't hear it anymore, all we have is this kind of thin papery snare that was recorded in the room. That's okay. Let me unmute the sample though. So now we have this kind of complete picture, in my mind anyway. I, I don't like to throw stuff away if it, if, if it can be useful. And sometimes people are like, oh, I'm just gonna go with the snare sample. Or I'm just gonna go with what was recorded and I'll find another, like have them work together. And again, spill is okay. I don't think spill really you know killed the mix. I think it sounds fine that things are a little a little kind of beefy in the in the drums to me. Um, so now we have another kind of kick in here. SSL Legacy. This is like my kick drum channel strip. Let me mute this. Turn it on. just adding a little bit of that like oomph, right? Um, and yeah, we're getting some bleed, but again, I don't care about bleed right now. So uh, we have our kick sample below. A little VOG on that. Let's hear before and after. Turn it on. Just a bit of the room comes in. You feel it in your chest if you have a sub, like just, oh, there it is. I might've gone a bit too hard on the low end in this track. We'll see. Um, I like low end. And again, I was mixing this for fun. So um, here they are together. I'm gonna take processing off both here. And in the 
Mix. Cool. I'm just checking the time to see how long this is going, if I have enough time to record left. Um, and that's that's it. We have uh, another kind of crazy um, programmed outro here, lo-fi programmed outro from Brian for this kind of wacky section. <laughs> It's phasing, it's flanging, it's got vo- it's got everything on there. I just turn it down a hair, okay? And that's it. Um, and that's the drums. Let's go to the drum bus, um, which is everything's being sent there. Distressor. This is just to squeeze everything and to put it into a nice kind of picture frame and make it all work together. It's, you know, it's distortion plus compression. You guys know this um, from, from Distressor. Uh, and if I bypass it, shit, let me let me go to another part here. This is off. So there's something just beautiful about how the distressor just squeezes everything together and everything just gets along. I'm just going to solo everything here so that we can really hear what this guy is doing. Here's before. And after. We have ducking, we have pumping, we have all that stuff. But but and but the 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 overheads are like part of it now. It's splashing, it's swishy, it's liquid, it's high frequency. You know, like it's just it's. I don't, it sounds awesome to me. Um, and I just use this drum bus. I can't remember where I got it. I just I looked around and someone had the word drum bus, and I'm like, great, I'm done. And that's all I did. But there is some um some more stuff happening here. We have soothe again. This is just a safety, but. If you've got drums poking out in the mix and stuff and distracting people or making them want to turn it down, that's not cool. And we have a lot of low end on the toms and the kick, and you'll see the bass later. So I don't want anything poking. Uh, So here's before. It's just helping everything kind of get along. And that's it. Uh, That's it for the drums. Let's keep going. I think we're almost done here, guys. We have keys, um, gorgeous keys recorded in this track. Uh, We start with a Mellotron. And this comes in, I think, uh, at a significant moment in the track. So I wanted to make sure that it was highlighted. So on it, it's got um, Pad Magic RC20. Again, it's a little little crayon box. It just adds something kind of special. Uh, here's what it sounds like without it. And here it is on. So we have some radio grit, some wow and flutter. Uh, we're kind of more stereoized here, and it just sounds it sounds awesome. But I did have to take it down 7 dB because it's quite loud, um, and it's a little piercing. So we got to be careful we don't you know annoy anyone with this stuff. 
Um, we have another pad over here, which is Airways pad. This is pretty constant throughout the song. It's all the way over to the left. And I have a brigade chorus just adding, well, chorus. Cool, that's it. Uh, Pro Q, I thought I would dip a little bit of the shelf uh, out here, starting at uh, yeah, that, that magic spot, that 2100 cycles and all the way down just because it was a little too much. Um, and when I was sending this mix off for feedback to some friends of mine, they were like, that pad, just like, you gotta figure something out. It's just too, ugh. So um, this was my solution. <laughs> So you can see when I take it off, on, listen on the left side, it is a little high. When will it be? Just keeps it focused on the mid range. Again, that's all the way to the left. We have this lovely little piano cassette print thing, which is nothing, no effects, no nothing. And it's, it's you know, it's uh, hanging out in the middle here. Cool, almost done. We have this vibraphone cassette thing, and this is, again, up the middle. Soothe is on it. I found this to be very resonant, um, and so that's why Soothe is, is doing a lot of work here, especially at this, at this frequency at 600 cycles or whatever. It just kind of makes my ears close up, so I had to do something. And... No compression. It might have benefited from some, but uh, in the mix. When will it be enough? It's always what you... Now, almost done here. We have the Wurlitzer, which is getting some compression. It's getting a little bit of that dip to make room for the vocal when it steps forward. Here's what it sounds like. All the way to the right. Here's uh, the plugins off. Just some control, that's it. Cool. And on the actual keys track itself, another API, 25. Piano Leveler is the one that I went with. I'm a sucker for just like, oh, piano, I'm working on piano. Duh, I'll go with that one. So that's all I did. When will it be enough? It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see that you don't have? Let's finish up here with the master bus. The first thing I have, and this has become a kind of staple, is the uh, this Neve uh, 33609C uh, doing barely four decibels of gain reduction? This just I don't. This just sounds awesome. Um, I'm going to get these other limiters out of the way, um, and let's have a listen to it. the track's going to go down a level. You might want to turn up, but um, have a listen. Turn it on. It's always what you're thinking of. What will it take to see that you don't have to prove your worth to me? 
it's in my ears. I'm just getting, I'm getting my kick back and it's just kind of punched up. My shakers, my snare, all that stuff is coming up. But uh, again, we're, I'm careful not to have too much, um, too much compression and too much gain reduction because that would really, I think, work against all the work that I did in the mix to get things nice and bright and, and punchy, um, but even. And then the next thing we have is a vintage limiter. Uh, I'm, I'm using two limiters here. Start with the vintage limiter. It's it's not doing too much work, but just a little bit to kind of get us in 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 the ballpark for a good level. It's always what you're of. The fact it really comes on during these big kind of. And then the very last thing I have here is the maximizer. If you find it, what will you do? So that's all the processing. I do want to spend the last section here just talking about this setup here. So what I do is I've got my volume and then I have moments that I highlight. So what I've done is I've actually taken the entire song down <coughs> almost a decibel, 0.7. Okay. And then what I do is I go into my choruses or in high impact moments and I bring it up to zero. DB. So we're starting at a deficit, right? And this just helps the choruses pop along with the work that I'm doing on my on my buses, my guitar. Actually, we don't really have anything here for this section. Let me find one where we do. I think in the drums I did this. Right. So we bring things up a notch right here, right? And that's getting added on at the master bus level because we start at the deficit of, of 0.7 and then we come up a little bit just to make this chorus pop. To prove your worth to me. And it's gonna come right back down. Here it comes once again. It's gonna go back up here. So this isn't, I'm not doing this as like a, I'm not trying to be lazy, but this is a, a trick that I've been using for a long time to help accent things. Where the real work needs to happen to provide dynamic contrast and color contrast is with some of the stuff I was talking about with the vocals, right? Where you hide certain things like the whisper vocals and the doubles, you hide those in the verse, don't play them. Put them in the chorus to, to make things pop. You know, you can't just shove the level up and be like, it's the chorus now. You have to do stuff with the arrangement and with panning to make the choruses pop on their own with the ingredients that you have. But this just helps to lift things up a little bit at the master bus level um, to really accent those, those points in the arrangement. So just for fun, I think what I'll do is I will, if I can here, I'm going to mute, or I'm gonna turn everything off and just play the mix as it came to me. Uh, I'm sure the Pro Tools wizards know the quick command for doing this, but I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way and just mess everything up. Can I do this? Okay, there we go. I'm gonna turn all of my plugins off and all of my sends off. And you can listen to a little bit of, of what I was sent. Now keep in mind, this is not, you know, this is not really like the actual mix. I, there might've been, actually, you know what? Given that if I go over here, we're at Unity, this is very representative of, of what I was given. So have a listen.
All right, so let me just turn everything on. So you can hear how far we came. I think everything's on now, yeah. So the very, very, very last thing here is that I do have this thing called tonal balance control on the master bus. And what this is going to do is provide a bit of a gut check for me to know if I have decent tonal spread between low, low mid, high mid, and high. And also it gives me a sense of what my crest factor is, specifically in the low end to make sure that my low end isn't too dynamic or too uh, compressed. So um, I have it set against a rock target. I can actually upload my own targets if I want, or like my own tracks, and it'll turn them into targets for me. But just so you can see here, uh, let's maybe bring it to the most raucous part. <laughs> So if I go to the, the, the broad view, I can see that my, my lines are lining up pretty well. Uh, the fine view as well. The crest factor is trending toward like too dynamic, but I think I'm okay with that. Uh, personally, this is just an opinion, right? Um, and again, this is set against rock. There's a bunch of other targets, but I just happen to go for rock because this is kind of indie rock, um, but another target might be more appropriate. But this just lets me know I'm headed, I'm headed in the right direction. Nothing is too kind of out of whack or, or you know, sour or low or, or whatever. Um, and that's how I mix this track called Worth by uh, Eastern Souvenir. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I know this was a long one, and I appreciate you coming on the ride. If you made it all the way to the end, hi. How's it going? All right. I'll see you in the next one, guys. <laughs>